Hi guys, Luton here, back for some more Armour 3. And uh, you can tell my voice is still totally screwed. Um, I'm taking on the role of the sniper today. Now, here I was overviewing the radio tower and the objective in the area, watching the helicopters here, observing while they diffuse the minefield. And basically, there was very little going on in the actual area. So at this point, I decided to call in an evac for myself, and you can see some more troops being dropped off here. I requested an evac for myself as a sniper, and we're going to look around the area. So having marked that, uh, this little bird's coming in to pick me up, dropping smoke so he can see me more easily against the hillside. And he sees the mark come in. Now, this area was pretty clear already, and we were basically just searching now for single targets, single squads that we could work to eliminate and finish clearing this objective. So the little bird pilot continues and he starts sweeping the area looking for targets. Now coming up we spot a single target on a hillside. It's very difficult to see so I slowed because I only see it for like a second I was like he's down there. I slow the footage down and you'll see the marker because it's quite tricky to spot. That's something you've got to get used to with armour is just you got to have eyes of the hawk, really, and you're looking for almost pinpricks when you're looking for targets, especially from the air if you're running the A164 or whatever. So as we come over this hillside a couple of times, we took like a few little cracks, a few little shots, and I had a feeling there's someone around this area. And then just as we come over here, you can probably barely see it on YouTube, but right there, there's a tiny little speck, which is slightly lighter than the ground. That's actually a unit. So I tell the pilot to drop us behind this house and I take up position to take out the target. So now at this time we're coming in on the next area of objective. This is the new one which happened to be very nearby. It was just almost over the hills here. And so I'm being dropped in with some other infantry. Uh, we're a little way away, we're just on the edge of the objective because it's very dangerous to fly straight in at the beginning of a mission. There's usually anti-air vehicles, anti-air squads. So you have to work to eliminate that before the pilots can start flying in around the area more safely. So I'm taking up a position over here, just going to go prone, going to start looking for targets. And uh, this is a fantastic example right now of how frustrating it can be playing online these days. Um, basically right now we're at about 800 meters to 900 in terms of range against these targets. And for me, and even for guys just running rifles uh, or LMGs, that's totally an operational range. And I think you can see, I think I get the first target here and then miss the second a couple of times. 
So I'm getting my range. That's the great thing about this scope as well. You've got the built-in range finder. So this guy goes prone right here. And that's a that's a kill. So we're operating right here. They won't be able to really see us or engage us more most likely. However, vehicles can. And this guy right here, what the for the start, he's like shooting the missile, the backdraft is hitting me, which is a bad thing. Second of all, he takes one target, but this is not the best time to be doing this because we start taking fire because there's so many units in the area. And it wipes out quite a few of us. The horror, seriously. Anyway, after that nonsense, I decided, right, the hell with this. I'm not staying with these guys. So I decided to go off as a single unit. Uh, Supra is actually operating as well. He's on the north side and he's a spotter. So I decided to try and make my way around. The trouble is, is that with the changed fatigue system in armor, running more than 10 meters ends up with your soldier having a heart attack. So it takes me a little bit of time and a lot of stopping, resting, moving, stopping, resting. Um, I'm carrying quite a lot of ammo, quite a lot of heavy ammo, uh, because I'm running this, you know, large sniper rifle, and I need to be independently operational, so I have to carry what I need. So I've got ammo, med packs, you know, uh, laser pointer targets, I've got everything I need. So I'm basically an independent unit, but it means that I've got to carry a shit ton of gear. So I'm basically moving around, and I periodically stop to check the area, make sure I don't see any targets on thermal, and then I move forward, and I stop and check, and then I move forward, and then I stop and check. Because the AI, as you will see, are so brutally good that it just makes it very, very difficult. If you if you run into a unit, you won't be able to react, or you know you won't make a chance. You can see the main uh, body of the force has moved in across the radio tower. Super is off up to the north side of me, and I'm just moving around, tabbing across. Now as I get to this point, despite the fact that my guy seems like he's literally about to die of exhaustion, and I can barely, this is like, I'm trying to move as fast as I can, this is as much as I can move, I just, it's every step is agony. Now I see and hear that there's some fire happening on the hill, bear in mind that our main force there, now what I'm doing right here, I'm checking that I'm not engaging friendlies, because it's really important, on the thermals of course you can't always see what the targets are looking like, and again that's why I go back to just the normal vision to make sure this is double checking that I'm not engaging friendlies. And then once I'm happy that I'm engaging enemy, I start to engage these guys. Now as you'll see in a minute, um, what happens to me is basically what's happening right here. Is that the guys on the hill probably can't t see all units. I've moved myself around here deliberately so that I've got a better line of sight on this side of the hill. So that I can try and provide some fire down. The fire coming in on my right side here, that's Supra. So basically, just continue to check and engage the targets here. They're taking fire also from a GMG and some light fire from the hill. Now here I see, look, two units which have vaguely escaped. It's very, very important that I try to eliminate and, you know, at least mark those targets so that the forces coming off of the hill there don't run into them and end up taking fire from those guys because they're hidden now in the woods. They're going to be difficult to see. Now, as you can see, I'm seeing small thermal signatures, but they're hidden basically amongst the woodland. So I need to adjust my position here to be able to refine those targets. And there they are. So I quickly move in to take them out. There's a lot of targets for you over here. That's both the targets taken out. And now at this time, Supra uh, starts to talk in-game to me and coordinate with me to move to the next targets on the uh, right-hand side of us here, the south side. So basically, from here on out, I engage a few targets, we scope the area, and engage those hostile targets. To 700 meters.
Yeah, I know. There's a lot of Griffin coming up the hill about 200 meters closer last time I saw them. And there we go guys, you really do live and learn, and uh, that was really the theme of this whole one. Basically, the guys coming up the hill on our sort of left side here, off to the east, I underestimated how close they were. Now we heard that fire was crackling around me before, and I could hear it hitting the ground near me, but I really underestimated just how close those guys were. They took us out, I should have scoped that area, I should have gone for those targets, but I felt safe at the time that we could still continue engaging. So there you go, it's a lesson for me and let it be a lesson to you. I'll see you guys next time for some more Armour 3.